Hello and welcome back and that's right today I'll talk about something that rightly I should have talked about a long time ago that is open media vault or if you go around in DIY NAS circles the other one whenever it comes to people trying to get their brand new NAS system and install either an open source or semi open source network attached storage software on it people always talk about true NAS they talk about Unraid but very rarely do they talk about O. MV or Open Media Vault, which is a real shame because there is actually a banger load of features and applications and services built into OMV that I think are worthy of discussing. Now, there are reasons why it's never really made the top gun slot compared with some of the alternatives in the market, but right now, when you've got things like that Chinese operating system FNOS alongside things like um, Casa OS and other kind of DIY NAS software rocking the boat i think it's time that we start talking a little bit more about open media vault this is a platform that at this point is around 13 to 14 years old built on uh, debian linux even though true nas scale is now slowly but surely killing off its non-linux platform Open Media Vault has kind of been there since day one, and indeed, the, the general platform itself hasn't actually changed that much in those 13 to 14 years, for good or from bad. But today I'm going to talk about what you can and can't do in Open Media Vault, and throughout the course of this video, I am going to refer to this article here over on NAS Compares, my website, hello, and in this I do talk a lot more about the benefits of one over the other. I will be making another video, a 2025 generation update, that basically talks about the benefits, pros and cons of all three of these platforms. But for this video, I wanted to do a special focus on OMV, because I've not really done that up to this point, even though giving the lion's share of coverage to these two. So let's crack on. Now, many of you might disagree with me when I say this, but when we compare TrueNAS, Unraid, and Open Media Vault, one of the things I will say about OMV that has kind of never changed in more than a decade is that it's always been the most user-friendly of the three to handle the fundamental services. Now, we're going to get on to beyond the term fundamental later on, but for example, Everything you want to do, if you've ever used a WordPress website, hell, if you've ever used Facebook, uh, chances are you're going to be able to navigate a lot of the options. When you get into the really technical stuff, yes, it can get a little bit intimidating, but things like creating your areas of storage, again, select it. We're going to go for ext4, for example. We give it a name. We select the drives that we want to choose to use. And we can do that. We can start creating our areas of storage very easily. The fundamentals are now down very easily. Shared folders. Once we've created the area of storage, we can go ahead and create those shared folders quite easily. Everything's clearly labeled. And although it's not as graphical as some of the more modern network attached storage devices, you know, up to a decade ago, this was still leaps ahead of some of the others in the market in terms of its graphical presentation. Now, the user interface of Open Media Vault is arguably quite intuitive, relatively speaking. What do I mean by that? Well, obviously, if you're comparing something like this against DSM or QTS from Synology and QNAP, which have got their pseudo desktop uh, browser experience in the you know the web browser, like you're using a local PC, this will seem very intimidating. But this ties a line between the much heavier file structure design of TrueNAS and the kind of breadcrumb icon by icon structure of Unraid. It actually finds a nice middle between the two. This widget for structure here for example can be completely adjusted with different widgets being added to your own dedicated needs managing the system managing what's going on is all available again via the side menu breaking it all down and then what you want to add and manage you can do a lot of the kind of standard stuff you might be wanting in terms of as you can see there creating air gaps scheduled on and off scheduled hibernation have all managed within this system alongside that creating individual network connection bonding network connections managing your firewall Managing each individual connection is all done here, and again, it, relatively speaking, it's pretty darn intuitive. It removes a lot of the hurdles of a language such as jails, uh, as in uh, devs, uh, removing terms like uh, pool and volume, and just breaks it down into a lot more familiar terms. I'm not going to say they're not visible. For example, if you go ahead and you wanted to create that uh, BTRFS, Paul, you are going to have to deal with understanding RAID groups, but there is a line where some of this can be understood. You may notice, however, that some things are missing here. And that is a feeling you're going to get if you have used TrueNAS or Unraid for quite a long time. Because, not dissimilar to Unraid, a lot of the core features of a modern NAS 
on Open Media Vault are locked behind plugins. Plugins make up the bulk of what the modern user of Open Media Vault is going to use. It is a lightweight platform, something we'll touch on later on, but the bulk of the most uh, useful features in modern NAS utilization right now you're going to need a plugin to take advantage of them for example if you want to take advantage of zfs you can but you're going to need a plugin if you want to take advantage of two-factor authentication you're going to need a plugin most of the feature sets that you would find in most modern nas solutions right now are only available such as utilizing a virtualization you're going to need a plugin or an extra bolted in that isn't to say the fundamentals aren't there. For example, managing Samba, managing remote access protocol of a local area network is all included with the base level Open Media Vault package. Diagnostic tools that allow you to monitor exactly what the system is doing and able to find out what's going on in the background can all be managed within this GUI. The majority of the services are here, right the way down, by the way, to things like secure erase. For those of you that might want to, you know, wipe out a drive permanently, where some NAS providers require plugins or extras to do this, these are all built in by default on Open Media Vault. This is what I mean about Open Media Vault nailing down the fundamentals very, very well. It's just the bells and whistles that have been added in the world of NAS over the passing years that have kind of skipped things a little bit and have been left as optional extras. Now, part of that, and again, this is a, hyper, this is a hypothesis on my part, is to do with Open Media Vault being such a light runnable platform. Now, I've said light runnable platforms when I've discussed Unraid in the past, which is true. It's far lighter to run than TrueNAS, given that Unraid can actually run in the memory of your system booting, uh, or at least initializing from a USB stick. But Open Media Vault is one of the only platforms of the three that can run on ARM successfully. There are multiple instances of uh, Open Media Vault deployments on ARM-based CPUs, something that you generally do not find on DIY NAS solutions when you're trying to run true NAS and Unraid. There are instances of Unraid running on ARM, but hardly what I would call stable representat representations. Now, I am aware how unfair it might sound that I'm not rolling in a lot of these optional plugins into the uh, description and kind of benefits of Open Media Vault, separating them quite largely from talking about this platform. That's because, as they're optional extras, they may not be for everyone. You may have already noticed there during the scroll that some plugins are susceptible or at least only supported on certain platforms there. That means that although it would be easy to say, for example, that some of these additional extras and bolt-ins for Open Media Vault could be used by you, depending on the platform you choose to build with your DIY NAS server, you may not be able to use them. That's why I have a tendency not really to count plugins as part of the whole stable package. That said, one enormous benefit that Open Media Vault has over TrueNAS and Unraid is to do with that price point there. Now, TrueNAS is free. TrueNAS is completely free and it does rely on community support. And again, although Core is still with us, I think we can all agree that IX systems are pushing more towards scale now. But Unraid requires a paid license. Now, Open Media Vault is completely free, but it's free and lightweight, and that's what tips it for some users ever so slightly ahead of TrueNAS. Whenever you look at forums of people talking about how and why they use Open Media Vault, you generally find that they're using it because it is so lightweight. It has regular updates, even though that doesn't require any additional payment. And the simplicity, as you can see there, and those lightweight system requirements are definitely what set it apart for some users who were just looking for a simple, no frills server OS to run from a small device. However, that does come with its own limitations. Number one, because it is completely free and it heavily exists on donations more than anything else, you are heavily reliant on community support. Now again, TrueNAS has this exactly the same, but because of the larger body of users on TrueNAS, the result is that you generally find larger and faster answers from the TrueNAS community than you will on Open Media Vault. That isn't me knocking the OMV community. Again, you can see from the date of updates a lot of these answers that they're not exactly slow to the kick. But still, it's worth keeping in mind with this platform that because it's free, a lot of those system and services 
and particularly the uh, qual uh, the UX improvements and the design elements are slower than some platforms out there. And never is this more present with when you need to step outside of this UI. Because ultimately, because of that lock behind most services being heavily dependent on those plugins, the result is that very quickly you will have to go in via SSH and start tinkering with things on command line. You're going to need to start entering those commands that, again, whether it is that you're using KVM directly into the system with a HDMI keyboard and mouse, or you're using something like PuTTY or Windows Shell to enter in commands, very quickly you're going to find yourself needing to do this when your requirements are beyond the basic level. Now, some of those services that are absent here in the base level product, deduplication, snapshots, encryption, just ultimately the Docker based applications can be added again using something like OMV extras and going via the command line to open up containerized um, applications and services to be accessible via certain repositories. But again, then we're giving a lot of praise there to third parties who are providing those containers and not the base level product. So it makes it very difficult for me to bestow any larger recommendation on OMV for those. Yes, there is an argument you could make the same uh, for that towards TrueNAS, but even TrueNAS has a bit of base level range of services out of the gate included with it, particularly with their recent rejig of how the app center is now being managed. If I was to call Open Media Vault user-friendly, that would be a lie. It just simply isn't. It still has a lot of the complexity of Unray and TrueNAS. Where it makes up for it, though, is a much clearer design philosophy. Although it may seem a little dated in 2025, it's still not too shabby. But for many, though, that design choice and that clearness in what you're seeing on screen is simply not going to make up for some of the superior elements of the likes of TrueNAS or Unray. So right now, do I recommend using Open Media Vault in 2025? The simple answer is not really for everyone, but for some users. If you are looking for a low level backup, if you are looking to turn a low powered small device into a targeted another backup to your existing appliance, then certainly I'd recommend it. Also, if you are looking for a NAS server solution that is completely free, and can run on the most meager hardware right the way down to ARM-based processors, you would be hard beat to find a better option than Open Media Vault. Lastly, if you like utilizing community-based applications, homebrew applications, and have a vibrant community that you can work with to get things done, where you can put a request in and say, I need my NAS to do X and Y, and someone will pump Z at you, then this is a great little platform to go for because it is full of volunteers and a community that still continue to back this product that many don't realize is as old as it is. It also doesn't hurt if you have a decent understanding of command line where you can work your way around to adding certain core interesting features to OMV that will allow you to have that lightweight system absolutely turning tricks in no time. If you fancy yourself an enthusiast or someone that just wants to see what else is out there, I do recommend checking out Open Media Vault insofar as to see just what exactly a system with low hardware capability is actually capable of with a modern network attached storage solution. But keep your expectations solidly on the ground. Know that you are going to have to take advantage of numerous plugins to make the most of this system. The plugins are directed quite easily on the system and as mentioned, you've got plenty of helping hands out there along the way. But right now, if you're a business, I would struggle to recommend Open Media Vault as your primary network attached storage solution. Right now, I would still say it is a second or even third layer backup solution. Definitely factor it in, but just know of its limitations or just how much extra time community support or command line and using third party plugins may add to the initial use of the system long term. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I apologize for not covering my Open Media Vault enough on the channel. There just isn't a lot of time to cover all of the options in hardware and software in the market but I still have to put my hands up and say I've been tremendously remiss in not covering this you know, well-known network attached storage platform, and for that I apologise. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.